everyone, and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, I'm going to give you 10 tips for practicing your speaking, and hopefully, they will make you improve in a very short amount of time. Also, in case you didn't already know,、um, I've started a second channel. This is a personal channel called Lucy Bella Earl. I've linked it down below. On this channel, I'm sharing personal things, things that you request like hair, beauty. Q and A's, videos with Will, vlogs, anything really.、Um, so make sure you check it out, and if you like it, then you can follow it. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Number one is practice tongue twisters. Now, tongue twisters are really fun anyway, but they are an amazing way of practicing individual sounds, individual phonemes. There are lots of phonemes that are really hard for people from specific countries or that speak specific languages. The only way that you can train your tongue to make these sounds is to practice the sounds over and over again repetitively. Tongue twisters are your best friend. So, for example, if you're struggling between the difference with i and e, which I know a lot of people struggle with, especially speakers of Spanish. Uh, because you only have the e sound, you don't have the short i sound. Well, if that's the case for you, you could practice this one. I slit a sheet, a sheet I slit upon a slitted sheet I sit. Be careful, it might make you swear. <laughs> I have left a link in the description box to loads more tongue twisters. But really, all you have to do is search on Google. Tongue twisters for practicing English. If you would like me to make a video on some of the most difficult tongue twisters,、um, a video that you can practice along with, let me know in the comments down below. I'll definitely do that because I love tongue twisters and I think they're amazing for practicing pronunciation. Number two is lessons with natives, and this section of the video is sponsored by Lingoda and the Lingoda Language Marathon. This section could be really, really important for you if you want to practice your speaking every single day. So Lingoda is an online language academy where you can learn English, French, German, Spanish, and business English at any level, and they run a very special event called the Lingoda Language Marathon. So what is it? Well, you study every day, unless you take the half marathon where you study slightly less. And if you complete the marathon, you get a one hundred percent refund on your classes. Or a fifty percent refund if you do the half marathon. This marathon starts on the twenty seventh of May and finishes on the twenty fourth of August. You have to participate in an agreed amount of classes each month in order to succeed. That's thirty classes a month for the full marathon and fifteen classes a month for the half marathon. You can take only one class per day every day. So how do you participate? Well, you sign up for the marathon before the thirteenth of May. After paying the entry fee that secures your spot in the marathon, you automatically sign up to a three-month subscription. I, however, have a special discount for you, and you don't have to pay that entry fee. All you have to do is click on the link in the description box and use this code when you sign up for a 100% discount on your entry fee. To get the refund, you'll need to show up on time for the classes that you book and actively participate. If you book a class and miss it, or fail to book a class at all, you can still finish the marathon, but you won't qualify for the refund. Remember that places in the marathon are limited, so you need to reserve your spot now to avoid disappointment. Also, make sure that you check the terms and conditions and familiarise yourself with the rules. Previous marathon graduates have said that this is the key to getting the refund. The Lingoda Language Marathon is an incredible opportunity to take your language to the next level fast. Alternatively, if you don't think that the marathon is for you, you can check out Lingoda and all of their flexible subscription packages, and book a private trial class for free. If you do fancy the marathon, click on the link in the description box and use my code. Right now, let's discuss tip number three. Tip number three is sing along to English songs. Now, this tip is especially useful if you want to practice an American accent. The reason for this is that many British singers actually sing with a slight American accent. So sometimes, songs sung by British singers aren't actually a true representation of their own accent. If you listen to, I don't know, One Direction or a British boy band, they'll often sing with an American accent. Even Ed Sheeran does it sometimes. Someone who does sing with a very strong British accent is Lily Allen. She does not go into the American territory at all. 
So she's a good one to listen to and sing along with if you want to practice speaking or singing in this case. Music can be a really, really great way of practicing every single day because it's so enjoyable. It doesn't feel like it's a chore when you do it. It's a great way to learn lots of slang, lots of colloquial language as well. It's also a really good idea to look up the meaning of song lyrics. That way you can really find out if they've used bad grammar, because sometimes they do to make it fit in with the rhyming, if they've used idioms or slang. And it's just really nice to know what you're singing about. But singing along with English songs is a fantastic way of practicing your speaking and it will help you become more fluent. Tip number four could be slightly controversial, but I think it's a really good tip and I always used to tell my students to do it in London. So lots of students struggle to meet and find native speakers to practice with. They often also have a hard time actually talking to natives because they're so nervous or they take a little bit longer to understand what they say. I would say that a great step to proceed talking with natives is eavesdropping on natives. To eavesdrop means to listen in on someone else's conversation. So if you're in an English speaking country or you know there's a specific bar or restaurant where English speakers tend to go, maybe try going there with the intention of just overhearing other people's conversations. If they say something you don't understand, search it on your phone, just drink in the atmosphere and you'll just take in a lot of vocabulary you wouldn't normally come across. And there's no pressure on you. Well, the only pressure is that you don't get caught because you could look a little bit weird, but you're not, do you're not doing any harm. Some people in England like to call it people watching and it's a really popular pastime. You just sit in a cafe, normally at the window, and watch the world go by. I like to call this people listening, where you just sit in a cafe and listen to what other people are saying and familiarise yourself with English conversations. Let me know if you've ever done this and let me know if you've ever got caught. <laughs> Number five is, oh, this is a really good tip. This tip will really, really help you if you're nervous about speaking English with natives or non-natives. Practice conversations through WhatsApp audio notes. On WhatsApp and on most messaging services, there is a function where you can record your voice and send it. I encourage my students to talk amongst themselves and to talk with natives through this feature. It's so much more convenient than a phone call and there's much less pressure than in a phone call. Whatever they send you, you can replay it as many times as you want. You can replay what they've said and practice it yourself. You can listen back to your own voice notes and see where you went wrong. If you record one and you make a mistake, delete it and record it again. Keep recording it until you're happy with how it sounds. When you finish the conversation, you have a lovely database of everything you've said in English and everything someone has said in English to you and you can use that to study. WhatsApp voice notes and other voice note services are such a great way of practicing your speaking without actually chatting in the moment. You can do it around your studies, around your work, um, it's much more convenient than a phone call. Tip number six can actually relate back to tip number five. It's practice debating. Now, I don't tend to argue a lot, but when I do argue with someone, I always think back about the argument at a later date and think, oh God, I could have said that so much better. I could have made this point, blah, blah, blah. You will never be good at arguing and debating if you don't practice it, apart from those few people who seem to be naturals. I suggest participating in or creating a debate club. Now, you could do this over Skype or you could do it over WhatsApp. WhatsApp would be my preference. Every day you can choose a new topic to discuss and debate and make sure it's done in an orderly fashion so everyone can say their opinion, maybe make a voice note limit of 30 seconds or 15 seconds or a minute if it's a really big topic. Maybe you could create a Facebook group for it. Maybe you could create a WhatsApp group amongst your friends. You could also meet people online, but just remember to be very, very careful and keep everything private and don't let anyone know where you live but consider creating a WhatsApp debate group and debating through WhatsApp voice notes. It's a really, really great way of practicing your speaking and your conversation skills. Tip number seven is keep an idioms and slang diary. This could be in the notes app on your phone or this could be an actual written notebook. Every time you come across a new slang word or a new idiom, write it down at the very least. And it's also best to write down the meaning as well. 
I remember in Spain, I would hear so many slang words, so many idiomatic phrases, and I would always forget them all. When I started noting them down, that's when I started remembering them. I'd be in a conversation and I'd want to use that sort of idiom, but I couldn't remember how to say it. Well, I just whipped out my phone, looked at my list and it was there. You can't expect yourself to just remember loads and loads of idioms. You have to use them. So don't be ashamed of taking out your list and using it in the moment. Tip number eight, this is so fun and it's something I do a lot. Host your own cooking show every single night. I bet so many of you have done this before, but it's a really, really great way of practicing a language. Every time you cook or every time you make something or you're cleaning, pretend you're hosting a show. Talk about what you're doing. It's a fantastic opportunity to practice English and practice speaking without having someone else to speak with. It's a really great way of practicing the present continuous as well. I am boiling the water. I am adding the rice. Maybe go a bit more advanced and say, oh, I'm just adding a pinch of this because it adds an element of flavor, honestly. Go all out. You could even record yourself. Maybe that's too far for some people, but this is just about using every opportunity you have to speak English. Tip number nine is remember to prioritize fluency over accuracy. If you're fluent in a language, it doesn't mean you are absolutely perfect at that language. It means that you can speak it without thinking, without stopping. For most people, aiming for 100% accuracy, perfection in a language, is just an unattainable goal. I don't speak English perfectly. I make mistakes all the time. I said growed in another video. Ugh, so embarrassing. Comment down below if you know which video that is because um, it was recent. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up over making mistakes. Remain positive, learn from your mistakes, laugh at your mistakes, and celebrate speaking English fluently and speaking English without thinking over speaking English without making any mistakes. Tip number 10 is read a book completely aloud. Lots of people like to read books at home, it's their relaxation time. But if you're at home and if you read alone, take the opportunity to read aloud. It's a great way to practice your pronunciation, to practice your speaking, maybe record yourself as well. If a book is too long or you feel like it takes away from your relaxation time, then try reading aloud one article every day or something from a newspaper. If you do it on a daily basis, you'll come across loads of new words and phrases and you'll also practice saying them and they will stick in your mind for future use. Right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Please comment down below with any other tips that you can think of. Don't forget to check out the Lingoda Language Marathon. The link to sign up is in the description box along with my code. You can also check out my new Lucy Bella Earl channel. I'm really, really excited about it and I'm glad that I finally had the courage to create the channel. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram, and I've got my Twitter, and I shall see you soon for another lesson. Mwah. Hello everyone, and welcome back. I have a hair in my mouth. Today, I'm going to give you 10 tips for... Today, I'm going to give you 10... That's five. <laughs> subscription packages and even book a free trial task.